Wix versus WordPress, let's get to it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is David, website creativepro.com. So Wix versus WordPress. Now I have to take a step back and be like, what are we talking about when we say WordPress? Because WordPress has had the brilliant marketing strategy to have their WordPress.com and WordPress.org be branded as WordPress when in reality that they are two completely different services. So WordPress.com is WordPress's website builder service. WordPress.org is the official website for the uh, script that you can download and install on your own shared hosting account. So if you get a shared hosting account with like Bluehost, they make it quick and easy to install WordPress so you can get started with designing your website with different themes and plugins, etc. Whereas like obviously uh, WordPress.com is the website builder. So what are we comparing? I'll compare both in this video. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's begin the video by talking about Wix. So what Wix is, is a website builder and their goal is to be your all-in-one solution for creating a website but by combining all the different services that you need to create a website, blog, online store, etc. And they are the primary competitor to Squarespace. Now what I mean is like Wix is like not just a website builder, they are a web host, you can manage your domain names with them, you can design your site with the tools and software that they provide, you can add e-commerce functionality, you can add, you can add in a blog, etc. That is the appeal of a website builder to be an all-in-one solution to make it create to make creating a website quick and easy for a beginner. Now, there's two things I really like about Wix. One is their pricing plans, which I think are reasonably priced and fair. Now, their two cheapest plans I think are really limited to the point where they're almost unusable. But, and so it's kind of pushes you to use their unlimited plan, but I do like that you have a little bit of flexibility with their pricing plans, uh, primarily because like you can create a website completely for free with Wix. It's going to be a subdomain of wixsites.com, but then you're like, hey, I want like a, my own custom domain name, then you can just do that. They have a cheap pricing plan that you can take advantage of to set up a custom domain name with Wix. Now, the second thing I really like is that they have an unstructured editor for how you like design the elements of your web, of your web page. And so if you've seen my Google Sites tutorial video, Wix kind of works the same way where you can just drag and drop things into place. And I really like that because in contrast with something like Squarespace where they have their templates, you can adjust the templates as needed, but it's a little bit more structured, whereas Wix is just more unstructured. And that's good and bad because you can end up making your website a big mess but you have more freedom and control to have a little bit more customization over the look, feel, and design of your website with Wix. Next up is WordPress. So WordPress comes in two flavors. They have their .com version and their .org version. The .org is just the official uh, website for the free open source content management system that you can quickly and easily download with any shared hosting account for free. So you can sign up right now for Bluehost at a great price and then download WordPress and install it. And then you can install anything you want, any plugin you want, and you have full control and access over the look and feel of your website. Now it is a little bit technical because you know with great power comes great responsibility as Spider-Man says, uh, because you can design your website so you can make something that ends up being like a big mess and you just get bogged down by technical issues. But luckily I have a bunch of tutorial videos on this channel that you can watch to follow along with to learn how to properly create a website or blog with WordPress. Now WordPress.com is the website builder for WordPress and it's good but not great and I wouldn't even really say it's a website builder even though they kind of position themselves as like a website builder. It's more just a bunch of themes and with your account you're kind of restricted to the themes that you can install. And so like you can get a cheap shared hosting account with Bluehost, you can install WordPress for free and then you can install any theme and plugin that you want. Whereas with WordPress.com, they have their free plan, personal and premium. And those three plans, you cannot install any theme that you want and you cannot install any plugin you want. You have to upgrade the, to their expensive uh, business plan in order to have that basic functionality that you just get if you just get a shared hosting account. So that's the primary difference between the two. So WordPress.com is a is a helpful uh, you know page builder, website builder where you can quickly and easily create a website for free and then you can set up a custom domain name if you're willing to pay. But I definitely in general recommend going with WordPress.org if you're dead set on using the content management system and going the self-hosted route. All right, so what's the difference? So you have Wix and you have WordPress. So with Wix, you have a website builder and it's a unstructured editor where you have a lot of control over the look and feel of the design of your website with Wix and it's a fair pricing point. Whereas to have the same functionality, you're going to, with WordPress.com, you're gonna to have to be paying their expensive business plan. So comparing like Wix and WordPress, I think WordPress is just way too expensive because 
Their free uh, personal and premium plans are good, but they're just too limited compared to what you can get with Wix. So I definitely would recommend going with Wix over that. And then obviously you have the option to completely just get a shared hosting account, install WordPress and go that route, which I generally recommend for most people. But it, again, I know it's not for everyone because I've worked with clients in the past uh, where they just got frustrated with WordPress. I worked with one client and she was just like, I had enough of WordPress. She went and got a Squarespace account and was very happy. It's more expensive, but it's like, okay, it just works. It's sort of like an iPhone, you know? It's like, you just get an iPhone, it just works. And it's like Squarespace, it just works. It's quick and easy to design and set up your site. Wix is the same type of deal. So that's kind of like how you have to make that decision. Like Wix is a little bit more expensive long-term because it's one website for one price, whereas a shared hosting account, you can have multiple websites, WordPress is free. You can ins install free themes. You have more control with like WordPress uh, in a shared hosting account. But like WordPress.com, I think is just personally too limited. It's okay if you just want to create like a quick little website, a personal about me website. That's okay. But the thing is, is like like Yoast SEO is a premium SEO plugin that you can just download and install on your website if you're using like something like Bluehost and you have great control over the SEO. But like WordPress.com, you don't have access to that. So the SEO is just mediocre with WordPress. Whereas Wix is much better. Like the SEO and the, the on-page description, the title tags, meta descriptions, uh, all that technical stuff on the back end that you need to take care of, uh, you can have control of that with a Wix account. Whereas you don't get that with WordPress.com unless you have the business plan and then you, inst you can install any plugin you want. So that's the primary difference. Now let's compare the pricing points between Wix, WordPress.com, as well as installing WordPress on a shared hosting account. So if you're ready, let's begin. Welcome to Wix.com. So Wix does have a free plan so you can sign up for free, design your website, and then when you're ready to upgrade your website, you can go ahead and do so. And they have a bunch of different options I think are really helpful. So I really like this connect domain name option. Now you're extremely limited, one gigabyte bandwidth, 500 megabytes of storage, but it allows you to connect your domain name and you will have Wix ads. So it's kind of disappointing, but if you just want to sign up to Wix and create a beautiful, impressive looking website and just connect your domain name, maybe you just want to create like an about me website and you just want to have your own .com uh, and you're not trying to build it into this high traffic website, then the connect domain name option is pretty good. If if you're okay with having Wix brand ads displayed on your site. Next, they have the combo and unlimited. To be honest, I really don't see the value of the combo plan because you get two gigabytes of bandwidth and then three gigabytes of storage. But if you're just willing to pay a little bit more for the unlimited plan, you get unlimited bandwidth and 10 gigabytes of storage and it completely uh, removes Wix ads as well. So I guess the di main difference between the combo and the connect domain name is that like the combo allows you to remove Wix ads. Uh, but again, it's very limited, two gigabytes for bandwidth and three gigabytes of storage. You're better off with just going with the unlimited plan, which allows you to build a fully functional website that can get a lot of traffic, make money, uh, et cetera. So anyways, that is Wix.com. Welcome to WordPress.com. So WordPress, the website builder, has a bunch of different plans. They have their free plan, which allows you to just create a website quick and easy, and it's going to be a subdomain of WordPress.com. Then they have their personal, premium, business, and e-commerce. Now, personally, I would say their personal and premium plans are best for individuals who just want to create a website, blog, whatever. They're not trying to build it into this big uh, massive business. Now their business plan is great, but I think for the price it's unreasonable because like for right now you can just go to Bluehost, get a cheap shared hosting account, and then you can install WordPress for free. And then you get all the full functional feature features of the business plan with a Bluehost account in WordPress for much cheaper than this business plan. So really, if I was going to go with WordPress, I would stick to the free plan, personal or premium, and I would just use it as a hobby, uh, like a little side project, hobby, blog, uh, etc. Now, if we come down here, what we see is that we can have dozens of free themes across all the free personal premium, etc. Uh, but the thing that's a deal breaker for me is right here, we have install plugins and upload themes. So that is only available on the business plan. So for example, like Yoast SEO and other plugins for like Amazon Associates, you don't have access to this on the premium and personal plans. You have to upgrade to the expensive business plan. And so it's like, well, I can just get a cheap shared hosting account with Bluehost and then have full access to any theme I want, like the Divi theme and any plugin I want. And so why would I go with the business plan here and pay that much more? 
So you have to take that into consideration. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is that they don't list bandwidth anywhere. So you kind of have to assume that this is probably going to be like unlimited bandwidth, which I hope is the case because there's just, we just do control find and we do band. Like it doesn't, they don't have any option for like where they explain how much bandwidth you got. Now, unlimited bandwidth is never really unlimited. Like they don't want you like having a site that gets a million visitors, <laughs> obviously. But I do find it weird that they don't specifically state what the bandwidth is but anyways in regards to the pricing plans i think they're reasonably priced for the personal and the premium uh, if we come down here it's the storage like the the personal plan is six gigabytes the free plan is three gigabytes for storage and that's acceptable that's good like six gigabyte is okay that's not a ton of space for a website but that's that's enough okay and then the 13 gigabytes for premium that's okay and so that's the, that's the primary difference between these pricing plans. In general, I would definitely would recommend going with a shared hosting account, installing WordPress. You get all the features of the business plan on your own cheap shared hosting account instead of paying $25 a month. But if you're just looking to create a simple site, uh, I think I like personal and premium, but again, compared to like something like Wix, which is a very structured editor that allows you to manipulate the on-page elements of your website with ease, I really like I like Wix a lot more than WordPress with that regard because you would have for for WordPress you would have to get like the business plan and then you'd have to go buy the Divi theme for example or Themeify Ultra, so you're then able to design and have your your site with full features and control as you want, and so that's the primary difference within the pricing point between Wix and WordPress. Okay, so let's compare the pricing points between Wix and WordPress. So if we're going to be going the WordPress.org route, where you're going to be installing WordPress on your own shared hosting account, how much does that cost? So here is Bluehost and these are typical plans. And so you can get a plus plan for $5.95 a month or a choice plus for $6.95 a month. And then it renews, both renew at $14.99 a month. And you have the ability to have unlimited websites, unlimited SSD storage, unmetered bandwidth, these are the plans that allow you to build a website easily to like 1,000, 2,000 visitors a day, 50, 60,000 page views, etc. You have all the features and functionality you need, uh, and you can get a domain name at Namecheap for $8.88 a year. Now, again, with Wix, it's $12.50 is their unlimited plan, not including the domain name. Now, it says free domain name for one year, but again, like I always say in every video, free is not free. It's free for the first year, then you're going to be paying an inflated renewal rate. So you're going to have to factor this price in and then the cost of a domain name, which is only $8.88 a year. It's very cheap. And then obviously WordPress.com's uh, pricing is $8 for premium, $4 for personal, which is really good. But again, as I said earlier, it's too limiting because you can't install the themes that you want and you can't install the plugins that you want. And so for me, that's just a personal deal, bre deal breaker because you don't have that control over the look and feel of your sites like you do with Wix. So in general, I think Wix has a very compelling offer because $12.50 a month is a good price. It's not it's not cheap, it's not too expensive. You have to get your own domain name at like Namecheap, but then you pay $12 a month and you're good to go. Whereas like with Bluehost, you can get an outstanding hosting account for just like $5.95 a month or $6.95 a month. That's so cheap for like, you can buy this plan for two years, three years in advance at this introduction rate. And then when it renews, it renews at $14.99 and you can have unlimited websites. Whereas with Wix, this is one website, guys. This is for one website. You can have unlimited websites. You can have two, three websites on this Choice Plus plan, etc. So that is the primary difference with the price points between Wix and WordPress. Okay, that is it for this video comparing WordPress and Wix. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is David, WebsiteCreditPro.com. If you did like the video, consider subscribing, hit that like button, and explore the channel because I have over 100 videos of content. I have plenty of WordPress tutorials so you can create your own website and blog with ease. Anyways, I'm starting to ramble, so I'll leave it there. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.